Hello and welcome to the video. This is a first look and review of this thing here. This is one of the latest quads from GEP RC. Now, before we get into this, I need to say that I am a fan of GEP RC quadcopters. One of the first ones I looked at was the Cinego HD quad. Still have that here and fly it regularly. Then I uh, had the Mark IV, which uh, again is that kind of explorer with a GPS on the back. And then the most recent one I had that I'm completely in love with is the Crocodile Baby. Little four inch lithium ion base, 20 odd minutes of flying around. All of these uh, that I have here have the DJI system on, but you can get them with analog FPV systems and different receivers too. Just happens that I'm using them here uh, with the DJI kit. Now this is one of those models that's definitely designed to be a little cine uh, machine. Uh, the, the default camera angle, I'm not sure if you can kind of see that there on the quad, um, it's probably about 45 degrees. I thought that was going to be too much, but actually, you know what? That's really nice for flying around. Um, I'll do the usual stuff in here. I'll put time codes down below. Let's go through and show you how it comes in the box, what you get with it. And I'll also show you uh, the beta flight setup. Again, dump and diff files available on the link below. And then I'll show you what it flies like and give you my thoughts at the end. So this is how it comes in the box. Now this is an F4 based flight controller in here, 20 amp ESCs and the new 1204 3750 kV motor with five bladed props. Now, uh, first of all, we have the quad that's kind of all ready to rock and roll. I'll take that out of the shrink wrap in a minute. We'll have a closer look. We have a bag full of bits. Uh, lots of cool stuff in here, including a spare set of props, uh, the different pads. We get the stickers and the manual for the DJI CADIC system. Uh, it is the Nebula Pro on here, which is good. So it's going to be a lovely image. As I take it out, let's just run through some of the key features. It has a new camera damping system. So both the FPV camera and the integrated mount for a skeletonized action camera is all ready to go in the box. Uh, you get everything you need. Nice to see cameras been dampened like this. I haven't seen that for a very long time. People have just relied on TPU mounts. Different kind of frame from what I've seen from Get RC in the past. This is a pusher frame, so the rotors are actually pushing down. Uh, I quite like these because uh, we tend to run into stuff, not the other way around. Turning it over, we can see those lovely five inch props. Foam surrounds to make sure that it bounces off stuff. And the CADIC system is at the bottom on that single foot. And you can put a piece of foam on there and that essentially is where it sits. Do love the fact that they have vibration isolated mounted it. Now one of the things you might notice on here is this extra little flying lead stuck out the top and I must admit I had to ask GEPRC what that's for with battery ground and RCE on the top. That is to plug in to power that skeletonized action camera if you fit one. What a wonderful idea. This is pretty clearly made from the ground up to be a cine whoop or a super whoop to fly around to capture great stuff in either HD if you use the DJI system or to have your action camera, skeletonized action camera on the top. This is the weight of mine without the battery and this is the weight of mine with. So fantastically this is under the 250 gram limit ready to rock and roll. Now I'm using a 4S battery. I got this one from Hobby RC here in the UK. I'll put a link down below if you're interested in getting the same one. But that is a really nice battery and seems to suit this model really well. So to get into the beta flight settings to the USB port on the flight controller and also the USB port on the DJI Air Unit light system at the bottom, you do have to take the model apart a little bit. It is supplied pretty much ready to rock and roll, but of course I want to see what the beta flight setup is like and also check what version of the software the Air Unit light is on as well as easily get to the bind button to bind it to my goggles and my DJI FPV controller. So with that motor out of the way and it plugged into beta flight, it looks like this. So before we get too far, uh, so you can see here beta flight 4.2.5, so reasonably current uh, F411 based flight controller. Let's enable expert mode and we can go through all of this. Uh, so just move it on the desk, make sure there we go, everything's working fine. I'm being a bit ginger with it because one of the 
uh, motors is hanging down. That is how everything is set up. So we have, I'm guessing UART1 is set for MSP for the DJI system. Uh, configuration is a quad X, but the motor direction is reversed. Be aware of that. D-Shot 300, everything else is pretty standard stuff. 8K gyro, 4K PID loop frequency. CPU load is nice and low. S bus input from the DJI Air unit light. Everything else is turned on. Air mode is turned on all the time. And then we also have the beeper function set too. Power and battery looks like that. Fail safe, this hasn't got a GPS of course, it's set to drop. And then the PIDs look like this. Again, dump and diff links in the description below if you want to see how they've actually set it up. I'll show you how it flies in a minute. It is super, super smooth, but I guess it's got to be that way. Modes, in my humble opinion, are set up in a weird way. Um, I wouldn't want the switch in the low position to be armed, so I did come back in here and tweak it, but I'll show you what it looks like by default. So auxiliary one is set for arm in the low position, and then we have the other two, uh, auxiliary two set for the modes, and then we have auxiliary three set for the beeper two. User one, I'm guessing that is something on auxiliary four, to manage the camera, the remote camera stuff, uh, and that's part of that lead that goes out on the top. On-screen display is definitely gonna need a little bit of work, so I would recommend plugging this in. Uh, that's nowhere near enough information. There's loads more that we can display, and let me do the dump and diff and save that out again so that you can see exactly how it's set up. So a quick test hover in duels just to make sure that everything's okay after I found it. Uh, just out of interest, the DJI unit is on the almost the latest version of the software but at the moment that's what my goggles is on so that works for me but be aware of that if you're using the very latest version of the software you might have to drop the air unit light out the bottom to get to the usb cable to plug it into the dji system and update it it is a bit louder than I expected. Uh, obviously, this is a video inside, so you can hear it a little bit more. Uh, but flying around outside, it's one of those where I expected it. Once it got um, you know, a couple of hundred meters away, that it would be difficult to hear. And you can still hear that high whine. Uh, Dual-bladed props like on the Crocodile Baby uh, are far less noisy when I'm flying. But in terms of flying, this is the footage from my DJI goggles. It is lovely. Uh, hovering at about 40% throttle and flying at about 55, 60% throttle without too much trouble at all. Again, this is without any action camera installed on the top. So this is the weight as I've just showed it. And interestingly, although the angle on the camera, as I showed before, it's like it comes at a 45 degrees, looked really, really excessive. You can see here from the way the horizon's in the middle of the picture, that actually that's kind of where it needs to be to fly around. Cruising is at that kind of angle and it works really nicely. This is not a race car by any stretch of the imagination, but it is incredibly easy to fly, really, really smooth and forgiving. And the performance of the Nebula Pro camera is exactly what you'd expect. It just looks like the DJI one. It's doing a great job of showing exactly what's going on. And I'm very, very comfortable, particularly as the props are enclosed, to get quite close to the trees, even though when I go behind some of the trees or in some attitudes where the antenna is a little bit obscured from the goggles, um, I occasionally get a little bit of breakup, but that's pretty standard for the single antenna CADIC system. Now the flight time I'm getting out of that battery is just under five minutes. This particular flight that the footage is from was about four minutes 20 and I had about 27% remaining in the battery. But this is absolutely epic fun. This is a great little cine quad. This is the kind of cine quad that I would actually fly rather than the small whoop style this is really, really smooth to fly. The image that I'm getting out of it is super, and I've not stabilized this footage at all. This is absolutely raw as it came off the camera. So in summary, what do I think? Well, I actually really like it. I don't fly a lot of this class of quad, but this is one that I'm going to keep around. 
for no other reason than uh, it is incredibly fun to fly, but also I'm expecting a camera in soon that would fit beautifully in there. And the idea of just being able to plug the lead in already wired up and it's on a vibration isolated mount is just really, really good thinking on a cine quad like this. Build quality is very good. The QC sticker actually means something on these quads. It doesn't just mean they bought a sheet of QC stickers. Uh, the flight time is pretty good. Really, really buttery smooth flying. Like the fact that you get a spare set of props in the box. Are they going to have to work particularly hard to break these? He says, nearly dropping it. A um, little bit louder uh, than I would have wanted. That's probably one of the few criticisms that I have of this. Um, and that's just, I think, due to the fact that we have these shrouded five-bladed props. Uh, they do make a little bit of a whine as you're zooming around. So, again, quiet, not as quiet as some of the uh, smaller models that aren't this kind of cine quad layout. Nice to see that there's no view of the props in the camera, particularly at this quite aggressive uh, camera angle. Uh, that 45 degrees, when I took it out of the box, I thought, oh, I'm gonna have to drop that down and then will I, will I see the props? No, well, if you get one, leave it like that, because actually that's the way you wanna be flying around. If flying around like that, you actually can make half decent progress. Uh, it isn't a rocket ship. If you're looking for a rocket ship or something to do flippy floppy or that kind of stuff, there's loads of other models. Check out the links and the quads that I talked about at the beginning of the video. If you're looking for a little lightweight quad that you can put something like a skeletonized GoPro or the Insta360 camera on the top, uh, this is really, really nice. Only a couple of things to be aware of, of course. First of all is that it's tricky to get into the USB ports for both the flight controller and the DJI Air Unit Lite. You are going to have to do a little bit of disassembly for that. And personally, I would recommend when you get it that you did that, uh, just because you want to make sure that the Air Unit is on the right version of software. The Air Unit Lite was activated, so that was nice. That was one less job that I had to do. And the other thing that I definitely needed to do was change the switches in the mode so that it matched how I use the switches on the DJI uh, Air unit. Um, so just be aware of that. By undoing one motor, you can get to the flight controller. And by undoing the four screws here at the bottom, the kind of whole Air unit light drops out and you can get to it. It's kind of a one-time deal. Once you've done that, you can just bolt everything back together and away you go. So finally, what's my pill rating? Well, I can't find much wrong with it, really, apart from the fact you have to uh, take it apart initially to get to the USB ports. Um, it's lovely. Again, it isn't for somebody who wants to race around, go at alternate speed and do the flippy floppy and the acrobatics. But if you're looking for something that is pretty bulletproof, uh, built really well, lightweight and sub 250 grams that will take an action camera. Uh, yeah, this is probably going to be towards that top of that list. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.